Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Cherry Falls, the 2000 slasher movie. Now, many of you have never heard of this movie. Some of you have heard of this movie and seen it. And some of you who have seen this movie don't know all the drama that happened behind the scenes. And that's why I'm here. So, is this the scariest, most sadistic slasher movie to ever exist? Yes and no. Now, this is a pretty good movie. However, the reason why it's not probably the most sadistic and scariest of them of all is because of the MPAA. They slashed and gashed this movie about a total of five times just so this movie can get an R rating. So the thing is, this movie was written to be dark. Very, very, very dark. They were not holding back on this movie. It got an X rating after it was submitted. And the MPAA said, oh, no way, no how. We ain't doing this. This movie ain't coming out until you start like cutting it and everything. So they cut it. Still not good enough. They cut it again. And it wasn't good enough again. So they had to do it a total of five times. And when they finally cut it, they said, you know what? Let's not even release this in theaters. There's so much drama behind this. It is insane. So basically, the movie actually did get released in theaters, but in the UK. And it did not make its budget back. And it didn't make that much overseas. So then, in America, they decided, you know what? Screw it and everything. We're not going to release this in theaters. Years later, after it was supposed to come out, they released it on TV on USA, and that's how I watched it in college. And so I recorded half of it because I didn't even know what it was at first. And then when it came back on a couple of years later, I recorded the whole thing on VHS. Trying to find it on DVD was the hardest thing in life because about, oh, 10 years ago, you could not find a new copy nowhere. The only copies you could find were either used or they had to be like a double feature or another movie, but that was sold out. They were sold out there where nobody was um, putting this out. In fact, tell you the truth, you couldn't even find it used, tell you the truth. Now that I'm thinking about it, you could not find this nowhere. It was sold out just like regardless. But then at some point in time, they brought it back out on Blu-ray and I got my copy. I'm not sure how much I spent, probably 14 and shipping. I didn't care. I wanted this movie because it is a very good movie. It is a slasher movie that flips the script on the genre of that of former um, slasher movies of the 80s and the 70s. How and why? Well, okay, it's called Cherry Falls. Think about it. Um, Cherry Falls is just the name of the city, but there's an Indu window in there, a sexual one. It's when a girl pops her cherry in there, I think, when she has sex. And so this movie uh, revolved around a lot of sex, a lot of killing. That's why it got its X rating. Not only that, but the reason why it got its X rating is because um, it featured a lot of nudity, a lot of nudity, a lot of sex, some orgies, and some killings, and some sexual assaults. And that's how it got its X rating because it featured teenagers doing all this crap. That's right. For whatever reason, the writer of this movie wanted to make a slasher teen orgy. Ew. <laughs> that's just gross. <laughs> so, of course, you had a bunch of adults playing teenagers and stuff. And so the MPAA was like, nah, man, we can't do that and stuff. And it was around the time where bad stuff was happening around the world. Columbine had happened. The government thought like, you know, all these bad movies and video games were like desensitizing like teens and everything. And so there was no way they were going to put this out. And so, yeah, 
Um, it came out on TV. It did not come out in theaters. You could not find a copy anywhere until they finally released it on Blu-ray. And so like, it's because of all the violence and all the sex and all the nudity. However, here's the thing. You would assume that all the stuff that got cut out would still be in the Blu-ray and the deleted scenes, right? Nope. They was put somewhere in the vault and they were deleted because they just did not want to deal with that hassle and stuff. And I kind of don't blame them. You know, you really don't want to see a bunch of teens naked and getting it on and getting their lives taken. Now, how did this flip the genre? I know I skipped that part. Well, it flips it because back in the old slasher days, even Scream has talked about this and made fun of it. When the group of teenagers lose their virginity, the killer kills them. They always end up dying and stuff. This movie flips that script. Here, the killer goes after virgins and virgins only. The killer is so disgusting that the killer carves the word virgin in like their like flesh after they kill them and they sodomize them and everything. It is gross, it is disgusting. They talk about that, but they don't leave that in. So we don't get to see none of that nasty stuff. We get to see one carving, but then it stops at one point and it kind of happens off screen. This movie is beyond ghoulish and everything. And it makes you wonder if they would have went there because movies do that now in times today. Like there's so much nudity and sex and violence in movies that it's kind of like, well, what's the big deal <laughs> but you know this was 2000s and times were a little bit different then and like i said before these were teenagers and stuff and you know it is insane what the darker version of this movie would have been like and stuff and it kept getting passed around with vhs to like people and stuff and that's how a lot of people started to hear about this you know and I remember, like I said before, when I got my hands on that copy, boy, I got my hands on that copy and stuff because I was shocked that that movie came out on Blu-ray because for so many years, they would not release this movie on, because the reason why they stopped making prints isn't because like, you know, they had a certain amount and they ran out. It's because the nature was still too disturbing for people. They didn't want their teenagers thinking, oh no, um, I have to lose my virginity or some crazy person is going to kill me and stuff like that. They didn't want that. So they were just scared and everything. The MPAA made them like scareful and everything. And you know, like I said before, it's a pretty good movie. There's a huge twist with the killer. I did not see that coming. It's sad why things like this happen. It has a star studded cast. My God, Brittany Murphy, may she rest in peace. That's one celebrity death that hit me hard when that happened. I used to love her so much. She's in three movies um, that I've seen her in that I just absolutely love. And she was on King of the Hill and everything as Luann, not Luann, uh, the, the, the teenage girl. And, you know, she was just like one of my favorites. And it was sad how she died. And but she did like a phenomenal job in this movie and don't say a word and clueless and stuff. And it's just it, it's sad what happened to her. And, you know, trying to think Mike Bean, he's in this movie and stuff and Jamie Moore and everything. And, you know, so they, and they also start a bunch of adult stars that normally play teenagers and um, teenage comedy movies and stuff. So they had a pretty good cast. And not only that, but it had a certain unique style to it. It's atmosphere like it had a muted like grayish almost rusty kind of color to it it was very draft it was very like muck and everything so it puts you in that sad depressed mood because it's in a small town where a lot of bad stuff happens and stuff and if i had to criticize one thing it would have to be you really don't really see nobody getting killed really like you start to see them and then some like movie flickery type stuff happens and then it goes like off screen because they just didn't want to show teenagers getting killed they should have put this in college but then that would have lose the whole sensibility of the whole virgin thing and so but my one huge complaint other than that would be 
these don't act like normal teenagers and they don't dress like normal teenagers. And what I mean by that is they don't dress like they're from say Pretty Little Liars or a Disney Channel movie where everybody's colorful and hot. No, they dress in like almost every person at that school and in that town dress in gray, black, white, brown, like really dim type colors. Everybody's either grunge or gothic. Even the popular kids. And that's kind of weird and bizarre. And then they don't act like teenagers. They, they act like the extreme version of punks. And like goth and grunge and emo and stuff. And so nobody really acts realistically. Not only that, but you can so tell they're in their 20s. <laughs> you can so tell. <laughs> and so when watching this movie, this is like what many slasher movies you really can't tell who the killer is and you'll be very shocked to find out who and how and everything and it's just like whoa that caught me by surprise because really when it comes to slasher the only real killer you can ever really guess are like the first two screen movies like you can kind of always tell that one of them is like the killer and stuff because of how erratic they act and everything and how demented and stuff but some of these other slash movies that are like scream knockoffs you really can't tell and everything and so this movie deals with like i said before a killer who chases after people this killer is this skinny woman with long black hair and she has these assortment of knives and she goes after um virgin teens and virgin teens only when she gets the first killing in um it of course rocks the town everybody's scared everybody's frightful when some more killings start to happen then all of a sudden the cops are starting to realize a pattern and they realized it with like you know um the first couple of killings but they couldn't really tell see like i said before the person will carve the word virgin in them and so the cops know that this is targeting teens and everything and you know i believe the teens are also being assaulted and stuff like that and or sodomized something else bad has happened other than them just dying right and so the cops, the, the local sheriff people, the deputies, they have to tell the people at the school. And so Brittany Murphy's character, who is named, let me see what this is. Who is our final girl? Jody. Jody, dad is the sheriff. And so. He knows like a lot of people in town that's very like up and up and stuff. Like he knows the principal. He knows, I think, the mayor and stuff. And it turns out he went to high school with him and stuff. Like I said, it's a very small town. And so she's a virgin. She has a boyfriend. And, you know, all this other stuff. But they just like haven't done it yet. And she's a golf girl. And she's just this cute little oh uh, adorable like little golf girl and you know and so and it was also she has like a gay best friend and that was very new at that time because you know it was 2000s and they were just starting to be accepted and everything but he's rarely in the movie and he pretty much gets killed at the um pa um thing at the school and so like you know she always hears like a conversation that her dad had with the principal and somebody else about what's going on. And so she has an inkling of what's going on that this killer going out killing like virgins. And so when the father, the sheriff and the principal has to tell all the teachers, the teachers, um, um, the parents, the parents are very concerned as you would expect. They all like, like, well, what are y'all doing to stop this person? There's been like two killings and stuff. And not only that, but they're all like, what the heck are we supposed to tell our kids? Go out and get laid so you don't have to get killed. And then so one parent's a little smart mouse all like, well, from what I heard from your daughter, uh, <laughs> she's already been laid. And he's like, what'd you say about my daughter? So a huge fight breaks out and everything, right? So all this chaos happens. And so at this point, her, um, Jody's gay best friend died and the killer is chasing her. She's able to escape and everything like that. Now her dad has tried to teach her self-defense and everything like that. Now, 
when she overheard the conversation with her dad, they mentioned a woman in their thing. They all like, um, because one of the teenagers was able to escape at one point, and so they gave a sketch. And the sketch looks a lot like a woman that Jody's dad and the principal went to school with when they were in high school. And they all like, how in the world can't be her? We haven't saw her in over 30, 40 years. And so they know um, it has to like deal with like this woman, but they don't know what or how. And so the woman name is laurel lee sherman and so it's kind of like so jody's kind of like wondering who is this woman so she asked her mom and everything like have you ever heard of this person and blah 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 and dad was kind of freaking out the mom is freaking out herself and so jody is in a very complex state she doesn't know what's going on she's been targeted by the killer um her mom's freaking out the dad is lying to her and then the dad comes to her at one point and is all like, have you and your boyfriend, like, you know, done it? And she's like, no. And he's all like, well, can you? Because <laughs> the cops can't catch this woman and stuff. And so at some point in time, her and her boyfriend get into this huge argument because she's upset and she's depressed. Why? Because she finally cornered her mom and asked, who is this woman? And so her mom revealed who Laurel Lee Sherman is. And Jody is distraught. Basically what happened is this. It was back in like the 70s. And Jody was kind of like this hipster, kind of grunge type girl, an outcast. And there's a bunch of jocks at school, right? And so there was one guy who was pretty nice to her. That was the sheriff, Jody's dad. At some point in time, her car like broke down in the woods or something like that. And so a guy comes up. It's um, Jody's dad as a teenager. And so like, but next thing you know, there was some other guys with him, his friends. They was all drunk. They was all drinking with her. As everybody's getting tipsy, her dad passed out drunk. He didn't know what the world was going on. His friends, those jerks, what they did was they forced Jody's dad on top of Laura and everything, ripped her clothes off, all kind of stuff. And her drunken father sexually assaulted Laura as they, as they were pouring alcohol down her throat. The dad had no idea what he was doing, probably as he was coming to, but you know what I'm saying? It like it was just a terrible situation. This caused her a lot of mental stress and everything, and she went away. Disappeared, nobody knew where she went after this. This upset Jody to hear that her father would do something like this. It distraughts her so badly to where she becomes erratic and she tries to have sex with her boyfriend, but he doesn't want to. And then she gets mad at him and stuff. The only person she ever has to talk to is her teacher. And so he's really like nice to her and stuff. And so the kids at school have realized the cops are stupid and if they're going to survive this, they're going to have to get laid. So they start teaching each other what to do and everything like that. And so they decide to have a giant orgy in an abandoned building. The cops find out and the sheriff dudes are like, just let it happen. Like he, he, he just gives up. <laughs> he just like, whatever, man. And yeah, we see a bunch of teenagers with their underwear on, just like making out and everything, not actually doing it. That part was cut out the movie and stuff. And so they, the, the cops got like, well, actually the principal ended up dead and everything. And so the reason why Nobody reported that assault back in the 70s is because the boys that did it were jocks. They had, they were popular, their families were rich, and she was poor and an outcast. So it got covered up. And sadly, that happens a lot in real life and everything. And, you know, this is like, when I said, when I, like, remember that movie Freaky I told you about? Remember when I told you there was some parts of the movie that were just out of place like the almost sexual assaults and stuff and i just said that just took me out the movie because it wasn't that type of movie and ironically that this movie cherry falls inspired freaky now if freaky would be more like cherry falls then those scenes would not feel out of place you see 
And so, like, when the dad gets, like, a tip, he goes out to this abandoned house out in the woods, far out of, like, the boonies and stuff. And he it belongs to um, Laura Lee. There's a baby crib there. And all kind of, the house is demented. It looks torturous and everything. He gets knocked out. He don't know what's wrong with him. Um, Jody and everything, you know, at some point in time, meet up with her boyfriend and she tells him, like, what's happening. They're like, you know, the orgy, stuff like that. And so, like, she's still upset, but she goes to, like, the teacher's house, right? And when she goes to the teacher's house, um, the biggest shock of reveal happens. The teacher is the killer. Remember, the woman I told you about is not a real woman. He dresses in drag, and he dresses like his mother. His mother is Laurel um, Lee and everything. His father is the sheriff, and Jody is his half sister, because she heard a loud noise in like you know one room, and it's like a box. And she's like, "What's in the box?" He's like, "You're dead," <laughs> and everything. And so then he knocks her out, and then so he has her tied up. He's gonna kill her, but then. The boyfriend finds out where she's at, finds her there, help gets her out. He, um, the killer ends up killing his own, like, father and stuff. He chases, like, you know, Jody and her boyfriend to where the orgy is. They bust through. As everybody's, like, getting in business, she's all like, the killer is, like, Mr. Something Something and all this other stuff. And then so the teacher busts in. It's all like, class dismissed <laughs> with the knife. And so everybody's freaking out. They're running half naked. They're trying to go down the stairs and everything. And the fight takes out outside. And I think um, something happens where, like, the killer falls out the window or something like that and gets impaled but still alive or something like that. But in a way, the sheriff deputy lady, she ends up shooting the crap out like the killer and everything. And so this is where a final girl doesn't really, I think she's the one who threw him out the window because her dad took taught her self-defense. And so with the momentum, I think she threw him out the window or something like that. Uh, it's been a while since I saw it. And so then, you know, gets impaled. So yeah, he gets impaled on like some spiky stuff. One of the teens all like, hey, it's Mr. Blah, blah, blah. He's wearing a wig. So then he pulls it off, but he's still alive. And that's when the cop like shoots him over and over. So with all this, I think like a DA or something like that started asking questions, you know, what happened? Why did this killer do this? And Jody and her mom just cover up and say they don't know. And it ends and everything. This is a very nuts type of movie. It is a good slasher movie. It has a disturbing nature to it, which is bad and everything. But the twist and turns will leave you baffled and everything. But there is some cringe, you know, with the dialogue. There is a little cringe with some of the acting. Like I said, nobody dresses like that in real life. But other than that, it's a pretty solid slasher movie. And it's becoming like a cult classic now. Because it's that mysterious movie that nobody never saw because they were never allowed to see it. Now wasn't that spooky. Alright, well I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>